Hey, welcome back to the Epic Storm. I am Brent Cook, and today we are playing Esper Reanimator, a donation deck from our good friend Andre. Andre, thank you for your continued support. Andre has given us a bunch of different donation decks over the course of the last year. A truly great deck builder. And today, Andre has added a twist to Esper Reanimator. We are playing the classic Gifts on Given package within the deck for Unburial Rites, and this actually used to be very common in the early days of Modern. You would gift Sig and Given, you would get Unburial Rites and Iona, just choose those two. So there's this weird twist with Gifts and Given where if you only choose two cards, it's just double in Tomb. So you would put both Unburial Rites and Iona back in the day, or sometimes Elishnorn to the graveyard, and your opponent would just be locked out very quickly. Modern wasn't as high of a power level format way back in 2012, 2013. So that was sort of lights out. And Andre has brought it back. This time we're getting Sears Emissary, which is a little bit more lights out than Iona is in many ways today. So Sears Emissary, no uh, Elish Norn in 2021. Instead, we're just playing, you know, Sinks of the Steel Wind, Archon of Cruelty. And one of the big things is th those cards are legends. So it, it's sort of tough to play those in this deck where we have Persist and Unmarked Grave. So you do lose the legendary aspect in this deck, which is part of the reason we're not playing anything like Iona or Elish Norn. It's not that those cards aren't good enough. It's not that Gristlebrand isn't good. It's that it doesn't work with modern Reanimator. So that's why we're seeing things like Grave Titan, Sears Emissary, Archon of Cruelty, and Sphinx as our main reanimation targets. So like I mentioned, non-legendary, Persist. This is the modern reanimate. And then Unmarked Grave is Modern and Tomb. So I'm coming from a Legacy background, so that's why I'm comparing it to those cards. And the Faithful Mending is sort of like Faithless Looting. I mean, it's a play on it in a way, just a little bit more expensive. And then obviously we have Thoughtseize. Uh, you can target yourself or the opponent. Consider, so that way you can get the uh, turn one Consider mill a large creature and then persist it on turn two. And then Prismatic Ending for some more creature control. The last list that Andre submitted was a little bit different. It was an artifact theme based deck. I think I called it Esper Dakinator. It was playing the Dak Planeswalker. It had an artifact sub theme. It had Thirst for Knowledge. It looks like Andre has sort of clipped the cuteness from this deck other than the gifts package. And this is very, very cutthroat and I like it. So... This is definitely my style of deck. And then when we move to the board, we have Silence. I'm guessing that this is for opposing combo decks and maybe Control. And then we have uh, Collective Brutality, which I love because you can discard Archon of Cruelty to get it to the graveyard while disrupting the opponent to then unmark Grave it later. And then we have four copies of Fatal Push. I apologize. Uh, there's split arts here and on our uh, Marsh Flats. I was lazy when I was renting this deck from Card Hoarder one of our new sponsors, but you'll see that in a second. Uh, but I was lazy and I didn't select the arts and I got punished. So uh, I'm sorry about that, but we do have four copies of Fatal Push, primarily for the Hammer Time matchup. Collective Brutality, I touched on it already. You could maybe board it there, but I do think there's probably a point where you're overboarding. Uh, eight remove, or I'm sorry, 11 removal spells is probably too much, but who knows. Uh, and then we have Teferi's for Control and Combo, and then Massacre Worm. This deck is really, really sweet. I love it, Andre. I really do. I sort of wish that we had room for Force of Negation. I don't know where it would come from, unfortunately. Andre mentioned that we're sort of light on blue cards, and I didn't realize that until I started looking at it, and that's very true. So it's just possible that blue isn't supported enough in this deck to run something like Force of Negation. Maybe you could run it in the sideboard. I do worry that... Our board's a little bit redundant, if I'm being honest, because we have 11 removal spells. Uh, I like that Collector Brutality is both a removal spell and a disruption spell, so maybe we could fit something else. I'm not sure um, what that something else would be, but these are just random thoughts that I'm having. I don't think there's anything wrong with this deck list. I'm just addressing some uh, potential room for improvement. That's what I've got. I hope you enjoyed this donation deck. Andre, you're amazing. I do appreciate you. That's what I've got. I'm rambling at this point. And now listen to a video on how you can support us here at the Epic Storm.
If you enjoyed this video, make sure to click that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. That said, there's no better way of showing your support than becoming a member of this channel. You get sweet perks, and we get to keep making combo content. The perks get better and better each level you go up. They also stack. To start off, with our Storm Fan tier, you unlock our private member section of our Discord, which comes with a highlighted user profile, and then some awesome badges and emotes for YouTube. Looking for a Cyborg help? Become a Stormtrooper, our middle tier, for two Cyborg guides of your deck choice every single month, on top of 50% off donation decks. Did we mention you also get 10% off merchandise from our shop? With our top tier, the Combo Cabal, you get a free donation deck every single month, 15% off merchandise from our shop, early access to private deck lists, and the most valuable perk in my opinion, videos early. That's right, you heard it, early access to all videos. Videos. But maybe Sweet Perk Secret Deck List Early Access to Videos isn't for you, but you'd still like to show your appreciation. Make sure to check out theepicstorm.com slash shop for card singles and storm swag. Please don't forget to use your membership discounts. Finally, if you want to see your combo deck here on this very YouTube channel, make sure to visit theepicstorm.com slash donation decks, where all you have to do is attach your TXT file and pick a donation tier. With our epic tier, you can even join me in a video to showcase your bold brew in person and explain the ins and outs of your strategy. Card availability won't be an issue due to our new sponsor, Card Hoarder. With Card Hoarder, renting is super easy. If you're looking to get into Magic Online, Line, there isn't a better, more affordable solution than Card Hoarder. Fun fact, you can rent the Epic Storm for 7 tickets a week, which is just a great deal. There are many ways you can support us, just pick whatever is best for you. In the meantime, let's play some Magic. Round number 1 and we are on the play. Hmm, 6 land prismatic ending, I'm sorry, but I think I'm supposed to mulligan that. This is a little bit more acceptable. I think we can keep this and just bottom of fetch land. Okay. Opponent mulliganing to five. Now to four. Okay. It's gonna lead on marsh flats. Maybe fetch a dual land at the end of their turn. And a shock. They're on Tron. Okay. <laughs> so that explains why they mulligan to four. Let's go get that hallowed fountain. Draw. Gifts and given. I love it. Okay. Forest. So no turn two Tron piece. I like that. All right. Let's cast this faithful mending. Draw two, discard two. Get rid of this fetch land. I guess on burial rights. Draw. Another fast land, pass the turn. On their end step, we can flash back the mending. See if we can hit a creature to reanimate with this on burial rights. Okay. Another mine. Not the best draw for our opponent here. Okay, let's flash back. Loot again. So I think we're allowed to discard a land here. And probably the unmarked grave. Draw. Another gifts. Alright, so we're going to pass. And here, I don't need to just get two cards because we have uh, an Unburial Rites in the graveyard. So I can go just go get the full thing here. Target them with gifts. And one thing that I really like about this deck is that you can get Faithful Mending here. So we're going to get Faithful Mending because it has flashback. We're going to get the other copy of Unburial Rites. And then let's just pick two really good targets against Tron. Um, I think we most likely want the Archon. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then do we want the Emissary? 
I don't even know how good Emissary is here. Maybe I just get something like Grave Titan. I guess I could get Sphinx. Sphinx is probably a little bit better than Grave Titan. So if our opponent's smart, they'll give us both creatures, and then I can just looting away the other two. So that way we're getting a little bit of incremental value off this gifts and given. So they should be putting the two spells to the graveyard here. And it looks like that's what they did. Draw. Let's go remove a land in our deck from the game. I guess we'll get an island. Um. Hmm. I guess they could flashback the mending, hoping to hit the persist. That's probably a better line than casting consider. I am so smart. I am so big brain. Look at me playing super well. By super well, I mean getting really lucky. What is this? Warping well? It is a warping well. You got it. Okay. Dramatic star, sure. Relic? Ooh, that hurts. Okay, you jerk. And they have both of my, um, what is it called? Unburial rights in there. I don't like that. Not one bit. Okay. Let's uh, target them with gifts again. Three cards in our opponent's hand. Mending. I think I just get a bunch of fatties. Brave Titan, Archon, Mending. And... Thoughtseize? I don't think they're allowed to give me Thoughtseize. Maybe I was supposed to know to play around the main deck, um, Relic. All right, I'm just going to pass the turn. I probably didn't need to do that in my main phase, but whatever. It's fine. All right, so they have the second Tron piece here. Is it Worm Coil? One or more colors, so that's kind of annoying. Um, yeah. I don't know how we're even supposed to beat this. That, uh, is a problem. I, w I wonder if Sears Emissary beats... Can you choose Planeswalker? You probably can. Play Consider. So let's put that to the graveyard. They're ending. Draw. So I can cast Grave Titan here. I just don't know if that's good enough. Let's remove this. Get out of here, token. Oh, I forgot that it goes to their... I am such a dummy. Ah, uh, what am I doing here? I'm sorry, Andre. I am playing very poorly. That's what's happening here. I'm going to allow my opponent's mulligan to four to beat me. Ah, oh, gross. Okay. This is where they hit Tron, have infinite mana, and then Ugin me. On their mulligan to four, because I played into the relic. Ugh. Worm coil engine. They killed my titan. What is this? Five mana? Six mana, so they do have worm coil. Oh, it costs two last, that's why they could do it. Well, I guess they had six mana. I don't know. So I could hard cast the Archon here. And then they sack the Worm Coil. Okay. Two cards in our opponent's hand. They can't minus the Ugin next turn, which is pretty good. All right. So they do get two, three, three Worms off this, so I can't swing my zombies in this turn. Discarded another. Oh, wait, they haven't discarded yet? No, they haven't. 
Skirted Ulamog. Okay. And now we pass. Drew another Gifts and Given. Is that all four of this game? It is. <laughs> okay. Chromatic Sphere. They're probably going to cycle the sphere here. That looks to be true. Seven mana. Karn. All right, so Karn's going to eat my Archon. Yeah, we're losing this right now. Pretty badly, even with our opponent not having Tron. Draw. That doesn't do me any good here. Um, guess I go get the Serious Emissary in case I draw in Chewy Persist. Flashback the Mending. Discard these two gifts. Flashback Mending. Or two lands. And we just have to pass here, unfortunately. Can I choose Planeswalkers with this? Yeah, I mean, it's a card type. Guess it's the out here. Remove Consider. So now they have map, they can go get the final Tron piece. Looks like they're in the middle of activating it. Yep. Brutal. They now have Tron with one card left in hand. Okay, so... I don't know if this matters. I'm going to double block on the Death Toucher. And then I can ending the life linker. Oh, that's dumb. I should have double blocked the life linker because now they get to kill both zombies. Oh, I just realized. Oh, <laughs> I was like, it doesn't make a difference, but that's not true. Uh, I'm so dumb because if I double block the life linker, I get to keep one zombie, but instead I lose both zombies this way. Uh, looks like our opponent messed up. That shouldn't have happened that way. Uh, consider yeah put that to the graveyard can I cast that okay cast the archon okay and just pass the turn so the problem with the archon is that it doesn't actually do a whole lot our opponent's going to get to just kill it with either Ugin or Karn here. Yikes. And they picked up a Relic, so they're going to remove my Seer's Emissary, which means that I just lost to a Mulligan to four in the first game. Yikes. I played this game very poorly. I'm not going to pretend that's not true. Ugh, oh, that was bad. Yep. Wish we had a better reanimation target for this matchup, if I'm being honest. I feel like it's not the best. I don't even know what we gain in the post board. Because, like, none of these cards are actually good here. You could argue that, like, maybe Teferi. It stops warping well, but also can, like, bounce some of the weird stuff. Maybe cut a gifts. Drawing all four there wasn't ideal. We just, like, don't have any real good cards for this matchup just gonna try this out the endings are the only card that like theoretically could be in the sideboard that we would board in to hit the relics but outside of hitting relic it's kind of not great here and you can't board in collector brutality because it hits instant or sorceries and the cards that we care about in this matchup are not really those. Like, hitting a potential Sylvan Scrying or something isn't really that meaningful. Okay, we're on the play. Sure, let's try it. Keep. Marsh Flats and pass the turn. Unmarked Grave, so you want to find Persist here. From Star, sure. 
go get our watery crave and then let's cast consider mm, let's actually keep that because that allows us to cast the teferi yes and unmark grave i think we just put archon to the graveyard you could get like mending or something but i'm not sure if i love that hmm yeah i'm just gonna do the archon that's the turn dramatic star sacrifices for a green stirring warping whale to crumb sphere sure come on persist okay let's play consider i can go to the graveyard another unmarked grave awkward um let's just hit the sphere as the turn you have tron no no tron nice okay let's play the teth so now they get a one one we can just bounce the one one that's the turn okay not tron so that's still a plus they'll have tron next turn draw plus we're just gonna pass what i can do is i can unmark grave for faithful mending on their own step okay they have tron annoying what is happening seven mana six mana again uh sure i think my plan now is to just cast these creatures all right i'm just gonna play grave titan here i could try to cast the unburial rights on the archon in the graveyard i just don't think that's a winning strategy instead i'm just gonna cast titan and hope that i can get the job done opponent still has four cards in hand so i sort of doubt it uh, not liking how this match is going both my play and sort of uh just in general it looks like our deck that is built to go large doesn't go larger than tron so we're losing that mid-range war a little bit even despite my poor play okay what's going on here four mana another ugin sure <laughs> killed my titan three mana now Tron floating one yep sundering titan yikes all right so they've passed the turn we're just in so much trouble here i guess we attack the zombies into ugin and then next turn they have sundering titan and it just doesn't matter yeah we got crushed <sighs> damn so I could unmark Grave for um, the looting and cast the looting, but it still doesn't answer our Relic problem. We're about to have half of our lands destroyed by the Sundering Titan. And they picked up another Relic. Yep. Barn? Sure. <laughs> uh. Have an unmark grave, why not? In the draw. 
All right, I'm just going to concede this one. We're not going to win it. I'd rather just go to the next match. If you wanted to sit, me, sit here and watch me try to grind this out, uh, I'm sorry. I'm just not interested in doing that. I've lost. I didn't play this round that great, and this is sort of just a waste of time. So I'm going to just move on, except uh, that, you know, things could have gone differently, both my play and uh, our luck. It is what it is. I'll see you in match number two. Playing your favorite combo deck in paper just got so much easier with the Epic Storm mini token pack. You can pick one up at theepicstorm.com slash shop for $13. It includes 64 double-sided mini tokens. That's 128 tokens total. And they include 10 black, 10 blue, 10 red, 5 green, 5 white, 3 colorless, 20 storm counters. That means that you can count your way all the way up to 20 for grape shot everyone's favorite storm wind condition a galvanic relay exile indicator four treasure tokens for strike it rich and then 10 monk tokens for our vintage friends it also has slime time live eighth progenitor ooze tokens with the power and toughness already built in to make playing in paper so much easier no fumbling around with dice we've got you covered make sure to go grab those if you're playing modern and then squirrels versus goblins chatterstorm versus empty the warrens the battle of the ages you definitely need 20 squirrel tokens and 20 goblin tokens you're gonna love this mini token pack i promise and once again you can grab that at the slash shop another round another opportunity we're on the draw and we have a thought sees a consider we don't have a second land for this faithless mending or faithful mending i should say I think I'm still going to try this. I think this hand is good enough. Hopefully I'm not wrong. And they've revealed the Lurus of the Dream Den. Bloodstain Mire. And two pass. Alright, we hit our land. Cast this thought season. Interesting, they didn't cast their thought season one. Okay. That's the turn. Really wanted that try land. Proxa going to very casually put an Archon of Cruelty to the graveyard for us. If we can get lucky and rip a Persist. Okay. And now they're playing the Croxa. And uh, let's discard this Archon. Draw. Not persist. I think we just passed the turn here. Although Sphinx was an interesting draw because it lives through Unholy Heat, which is pretty big. So I know that they still have Scalding Turn Unholy Heat in here. Look at this fountain. Okay, let's mend a little bit. Here the two creatures. Damn you, unmarked grave. What we can do here is use unmarked grave to go get unburial rights. And where are you? Right there. So now we just have to find a land off this consider. Well, ending can go to the graveyard. Land, how lucky. All right, so they still have three cards. We know two of them. Rest of iteration. Okay. Sort of a weird deck. So we still know it's Scalding Tarn, Unholy Heat, two unknowns. I think we're supposed to just flash back the Burial Rights on Sphinx here. Because if we do it on Archon, and then they... Uh, unholy heat it. I'm going to feel pretty dumb. Because the Archon gives them, could end up giving them Delirium. Right now, the Unholy Heat, one, it can't even target Sphinx, but two, um, I guess there is no real two. That's, that's just it. I was mostly just thinking about the Archon not giving them Delirium, which was the other big thing. But I had already said that previously. Sphinx of the Steel Wind. Snapcaster Thoughtseize or Snapcaster Expressive? 
Expressive. Okay. So this is just like a four color grind deck. Blue red off the crypt. There you go. I missed what was revealed. Oh, it was the Ragavan? Okay. So we now just know about Unholy Heat. Another unmarked grave. I'm getting sick of that card. Get in there. Okay. Hmm. I have a few things I could do here. I could unmark grave for the other um burial rites. And like, essentially I can cast both these spells or just the gifts, and they're essentially the same thing. Like casting both or just the gifts, like you get the same effect. Or I can go on Mark Grave Mending. Not really sure what the plan is here. I think I should probably just pass and do the Unsep Gifts thing. Drown in the Lock. That stinks. Yeah. So. I'm going to cast gifts now, target them. I think we should just do Sir's Emissary and Unmark Grave. Call it a day. Those will just be double entombed, and then their Thoughtseize hits going to five. So, what's nice about this is that when I flash back the uh, Unmark Grave, or not Unmark Grave, what is it called again? Unburial Rites. The Thought Seas put them to 5, so that means Sphinx will be representing lethal again next turn. Okay. They have 3 open mana, 1 unholy heat in hand, and 2 unknowns. Another expressive iteration, you got it. Dark Slick Shores. And instead they played a Scalding Tarn. So is your last card in hand an action spell? Uh, did I click on the wrong thing? I must have. I could have swore I selected on burial rights, but I don't see it here. I guess the good news is that I... I must have clicked unmarked grave instead of on burial rights. That's a whoopsie, but I do have this last unmarked grave to go get the correct card here. I mean, I waste a card to discard to the Faithful Mending later, but I guess it's good that I'm bailed out. I'm sorry, Andre. This league has not been uh, a very attractive one. I'm just playing like garbage. If they have a counter spell here, it's going to stink. They're at four. Is Sphinx good enough? No! Come on. That stinks. They can also bring back the Crocs of this turn, too. Damn. They got Lurus instead of playing Crocs, so that's interesting. I am not very good at drawing Persist for what it's worth. We're almost halfway through our deck, and I haven't found one yet. Um, I also struggled in the first round to draw Persist. Draw. Let's flash back that Faithful Mending. God damn it. So frustrating. Um, undo. Blue, white, black. Sorry, Lurus, you can go to hell. All right, get out of here. All right, so we're officially halfway through our deck, and I have not found Persist. So now I will go to 10. They'll get another treasure. Yeah, and there is no Persist to Exile to Ragavan either. Draw. Interesting that once again, they did not choose to put the Crocs into play. And I'm all out of gas, I just have to discard here. Or not discard, but pass the turn. <sighs> Ooh. 
sure. Probably should have done that in my draw step, but that's fine. Yeah, I'm just getting bodied. For sure, it's Bobble. All right, so now we fall to six. Gifts and given. <laughs> oh. oh, they remember their Kraxa. Or is this a different Kraxa? I'm not crazy. There was another Crox. Oh, they returned the Crox with Calgan's command. And now they're. Okay, I see what's happening. And now they're doing it again. So I died to this Crox uh, coming back. I see. Well, that was delightful. Wow. I loved it. Love getting smashed. Ah, uh, come on, deck. Like, I have to draw this Persist card if I'm going to win games. It just needs to happen. Let's bring in the brutalities. I don't think I love the tough here. I mean, worm could be okay, but I don't know if that's really what this matchup is about. I do think the flusters are probably decent. Honestly, I'm not loving the gifts package so far. It's fine, but a little bit slow. I do think Imperial Rights has been very good. Even without gifts, or if you choose to play two gifts, I I would still play the Imperial Rights, I think. Like, Unmarked Grave being a reanimation spell is just really valuable. Uh, so now I have to find three cards to come out. What if it's just the gifts? Maybe Shaven Unmarked Grave. Or we could maybe cut a land. I mean, I've been flooding quite a bit here. Let's try going down to 22. What's the worst that could happen? All right, on the play. Lures of the Dream Den. I mean, sure, why not? Nothing matters. Life is meaningless. We're all going to be dead and reanimated anyway. That was reanimated or joke. I hope you enjoyed Okay, so just turn one thought sees hurting them. Get out of here, Kaya's Guile. No one likes you. Blood Saint Meyer. And they take two off the Blood Crypt. Pretty good draw with the Dragon's Rage Channeler. Draw. Ooh, love it. That was a great draw. Let's go get that hallowed fountain. Hell yeah. Let's double escalate. And third mode. We'll discard both of these huge fatties. This is what I'm talking about. I think that these should be main deck personally. Get rid of that terminate. Okay. So right now they have instant land creature. So they're one off from delirium. Okay, draw. Just go get island maybe? Or I can't get island with marsh flats. We'll get water grave, it's fine. And then unmark grave. This time let's actually click on unburial rights. No messing up. And then consider. We'll keep that on top. I finally found a persist. Okay, they're activating their scalding turn. Expressive iteration. Oh, dash monkey. Okay. Ouch. Go to 12. Godless Shrine, you got it. Okay, draw. Guess the persist on. Let's do Grave Titan, why not? This way, I at least leave some bodies behind when uh, the Unholy Heat kills it. Okay, so now they're at 13. DRC. 
What is this? Unholy Heat? What's the target? The Grave Titan. Well, they don't actually have Delirium yet. Unless Kyle's guy is not... No, this is an instant. They have instant creature land. Is that an accident? Yeah, it must have been. They didn't realize that they didn't have it. Or they thought that they could have surveilled into it, maybe. Yeah, and they're just going to concede here. Okay, game number three coming right up. I don't think I'm going to change anything. I'm just going to resubmit. Yeah, Collector Brutality sure was brutal. I loved it. I want to see more of that. I don't know if I'm allowed to keep this. <laughs> Um, I feel like this is not a keep and that I should ship it. This is much better. Get rid of this ugly planes. It's actually a glorious planes, but planes in general is ugly. You don't want to tell your friends that you're someone that plays with planes. So, okay. Blood Crypt. Monkey. Draw. Play Island past the turn. Dark Slick Shores. Okay, what is the reveal off rags? Consider getting all the value off me. I don't like it. Bot sees that's going to get flustered. Okay, they have three cards in hand still. Okay, so they surveilled the Blackleaf Cliffs to the graveyard. Now consider as being cast. They milled another land. Draw. Another Persist is pretty good. I think we just jam the Unmarked Grave now. Question is, what do we get? And I think the answer is probably just Archon. Pass the turn. Okay, so we're going to take three here going to 14, and then Ragvan will trigger from your graveyard. So they don't have any creatures in graveyard. Draw. Cast Persist. Imagine they have like a Drown and Lock or something here if they weren't making any plays. Oh, it's a Kaya's Kyle. Son of a gun. Yep. That hurt. Okay. And I have to pass the turn. I can't end up consider looking to mill a creature that's on the table. Bobble. Okay, and they're targeting me with the bobble. Taking six here, going to eight life. And one burial rights. I think I'm probably just going to be dead soon. I have to be pretty lucky to stay in this game at this point. All right, let's get Hollowed Fountain and then cast the Consider. Yeah, that can go to the graveyard. Thought sees draw. You get your bobble dry, I suppose. Ending. Try to remove the channeler. Drown in the lock. All right. That's unfortunate. So what I learned this match is that uh, the collector brutality really overperformed, and maybe that card should be in the main deck. Uh, but let's just keep playing row two. I'm sure we'll get some match wins eventually. I'm not too worried about that. And, uh... Yeah, let's see what happens. See you in round number three. If you haven't joined them already, I would recommend opening up our description down below and joining our seven social media networks. They're each great in their own way, but I would strongly suggest joining our Discord server. In there, you will find others just like you looking to improve their Storm game and grow as a combo community. If you're a member of our YouTube channel, you should sync your account to Discord to unlock our private member section that has the latest and greatest deck lists, concepts, and much, much more. Let's get back to comboing out.
Welcome back for round number three. We're on the play. You know, I'm feeling good about this one. Let's get this win. And here we have a pretty solid hand. I'm going to try this. We just have to find a reanimation spell and uh, we're good to go. I've been thinking about this deck in between matches and I really do like the idea of just like not playing Gifts and Given. I'm sorry, Andre. I'm not trying to bash your deck list. But not playing Gifts and Given, but keeping the Unburial Rites, because those seem really good to me. And then just playing like three main deck copies of Collector Brutality and something else. Uh, I don't know why, but I think it's like the touch that this deck needs. Let's start off on Thoughtseize here. Is this humans? In this economy? I guess we are in the O2 bracket little dig at you humans players i'm sorry but you deserve it um i don't know take the image i guess yeah okay it does what i thought it did okay ziggurat into champion draw ouch pass the turn Seacrum Coast Champion. Oh, did they draw something? Ah, uh, they drew the Freebooter. All right, let's mending. Need to get this Archon to the graveyard. Okay. You can freeboot. Looking for Persist at the moment. They should probably take the Consider here. But I guess there's some argument towards taking Thoughtseize. And they did take the Consider. And now we'll take two down to 14. Come on, Persist. Ugh. Right. Um, I just have to be lazy and pass. Or I have to not be lazy and pass here. So if I main phase the end or the faithful mending, I keep on wanting to say faithless mending, faithful mending, and then they draw an image or another freebooter, I get really, really hurt. So I'm supposed to just allow this to happen. Looks like they're going to play the three drop. Yep. Got it. Now we go to four, or I'm sorry, we take four. Oh, whenever you attack. I missed that. I thought it's whenever it attacked, but that's still fine. All right, let's flush this back. We need to find persist. We did not find persist. Um. Yeah. Okay. Draw. There we go. So let's get another white source, I suppose. Put that in a plate tapped. Then we can ending the big one. Done. And then persist back the Archon. They have to sacrifice a creature. They'll probably sacrifice the token. Okay, we're back in business. One has three cards in hand, and we know that one of them is a silent clearing. I think we actually know that another one of them is another champion of the parish as well. They drew a freebooter. Okay. So they can take the gifts and give in here and then move to combat. But I don't know if they'd want to attack with anything. Even if they do get the um the one mana creature. Ah, uh, so now this would become a 5-5 five, five and it would trade. I see you. It would actually become a 6-5, right? Because this uh, happens. Let's just block that, though. I can afford to take 6. Draw. Let's get in there. They have to sacrifice a creature. So if they sacrifice a freebooter, I get a spell back. And if they sack the hierarch, it's fine too. Okay, so I'm at eight. Uh, let's cast the 
consider I can go to the graveyard. Um, I'm just going to pass again. So on their turn, they can attack. And this is going to go up to four with the other attacker. So that's five, six, seven. I would go to one. Okay, I'm just going to uh, flashback the faithful real quick. Here are these thought seizes that I don't want. And you have a meddling mage. Prismatic ending. Good choice. Okay, so I'm going to end up taking seven here and going to three. Yep. Okay, so I have to draw something here or else I'm probably dead. That wasn't bad. Uh, let's get in there. I'll probably sacrifice the token. Well, that was really good. <laughs> oh, geez. So now we unmark grave for another Archon. And uh, that'll do, Pig. That'll do. Versus back the Archon. And we've got a game win. Take that, humans. Boom. <laughs> uh all right so master Grimm's probably a card we want here these brutalities seem real strong so do all these pushes lovely all right let's get rid of thought seize. and that brings us to 64 probably cut these gifts and givens and let's just you know do the super effective deck thing uh sphinx isn't that good here but as a 6-6 six, six first striker with lifelink that's just good enough uh yeah i like how this looks i guarantee it or something like that right that's uh the, how the commercial goes let's try this out game number two we have the uh consider persist hand am i lucky enough to mill a creature i think the answer is yes i'm gonna keep it cavern of souls okay they didn't have a one drop that's pretty scary Ah, uh, all right. I would have loved to consider into that. Black, black for a freebooter. Yep, okay. Ouch. And I'm going to cast the consider. Yes. Ah, uh, okay. So they'll probably take the persist here, most likely. What I'd like to draw is a Faithful Mending or a Collector Brutality. Those are top draws at the moment. Draw. Another Archon. All right. Uh, let's just pass the turn. Another Cavern of Souls into Champion of the Parish. Metal Image. Yeah. Just grab our Hollywood Fountain and pass the turn. I want a Collector of Brutality. Faithful Mending. Reasonable name here. Pretty good uh, card. It's not the card I want. I have three of the card I want in the deck. And uh, believe it or not, Swamp was not what I was begging to draw there. Okay. And number four from our opponent. What is this? Oh, all right, they got me. Let's just go to game three. Draw did not pan out, unfortunately. But, you know, that happens. Losses happen. No need to dwell on it. Let's just try to wing the third game. I can't keep that. And this is fine. I think we just put the angel back in our deck so I can get it with Unmarked Grave. Keep. Okay. Marsh Flats go. On their end step, I'm going to fetch for Hollowed Fountain and cast Consider. Unclaimed Territory. Choosing Human. And a Champion. 
fountain, go to 17, and better. Yeah, I definitely don't want another copy of Unmarked Grave. <laughs> All right, so duplicates it is. Okay. Unmarked Grave, whoop, I tapped wrong for that. White, black. Let's go get the Emissary. I don't think that they can beat the Emissary, which is why I'm so interested in grabbing it. Okay, Cavern of Souls into Meddling Me. Sure. I think they're supposed to name Persist here. And they agree. So I think we're going to be a little bit sly about this. I am not going to main phase this mending, and I'm going to try to sneak in these. Ooh, that was good. Uh, underneath it, so that way they don't know to meddling mage and burial rites. In case there's another meddling mage, that is. Not the same one, obviously. They chose illusion. So they probably have... Um, what is it called? Why can't I think of it? Phantasmal image. There we go. And there it is. And I just need to let them name the wrong thing here. Prismatic ending. Exactly. So that's why I didn't main phase the faithful mending. Because I left myself the out of being able to discard these and then flash back. Burial Rites has really impressed me in this league. I know that we're 0-2 currently. And might not win this game. But that has been one of the cards this league where I'm like, okay, that card can hang. Like, that card is worth playing. And it makes playing the all-in collector brutality list uh, better, in my opinion, which is sort of what I'm interested in playing. Like, it just does everything that this deck wants to do, so I don't know why you wouldn't just be playing, like, four collector brutality in the main. All right. Up to 11. And now we get to Imperial Rights, our Sarah's Emissary. I said that very weirdly. Emissary. Hopefully that was a little bit better. Okay, we'll choose creature. Can you beat a 7-7 seven, seven angel with pro creatures? Phantasmal image. Ooh, they're going to copy it. <laughs> uh, that is one way of getting around pro creatures. I don't know if I can beat it. Are we stuck in a top deck situation? I guess I have to be able to target it. So I can target it with uh, Fatal Push. Or something along those lines. Let's cast this Consider. Yes, that can go to the graveyard. And let's flash back the Mending. I might discard these two lands. Yeah. Actually, I'm going to keep that and then fetch consider at some point. This is a very interesting game. Thalia, but no one likes her. And I mean that. No one likes Thalia. Okay. Consider. We can put the swamp to the graveyard. That's fine. Archon. Have to find a way of getting that onto the battlefield. All right, so now I need to find another Mending. I have Fatal Push and Collector Brutality in this deck. Just have to find them. Thalia's Lieutenant? Sure. Meaningless. Draw. Yep, I have to pass the turn. <laughs> Oh, I forgot that I can't cast Persist, the Metal Image is on it. Well, I still have the Unburial Rites. Draw. I guess we can always do this the old-fashioned way with the cleanup step. Okay. And number six of eight. I guess I could have discarded first. That was a small misplay. Damn. I could have discarded and then played it later. Red mana. Draw. 
All right. I'm not going to do the same thing. I'm just going to pass here. All right, draw. Uh, okay. Well, now I'm going to play this out because next turn I can hard cast Arkham or Arkhan. I have eight cards. Rebooter. I don't think they can target me with that because it's a creature. Yeah. Okay. Do I have? I have to have a fetchable left. All right. Let's just start casting uh, giant archons. Hit that F6 key. Oh, I don't even get the trigger off it because they also have protection from creatures. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Uh, this is such a weird board state we're in. Imperial Recruiter, okay. Well, if they have an out in their deck, I mean, this is going to be it. I don't know what it would be, though. Grist. Oh. I didn't know humans played Grist. I think I just lost. Yeah, I think I might have just lost. No, they can Aether Vial in their Grist. Feels unfair. Yeah. Oh. Brutal. Damn. I mean, this was a good match. I just never drew Fatal Push or any Collector Brutalities. I feel like I've had a little bit of bad luck this league. I don't know. But unfortunately, we're 0-3. I feel like I'm letting Andre down here. This deck isn't that bad. In fact, I think it's like reasonably competitive. Uh, but just not showing. Let's see if I can get match number four. Hey, you're still watching. Don't forget to like this video, leave a comment, and subscribe. If you're looking to make a purchase from Card Hoarder, TCG Player, or Amazon, and are looking to support us, you can open up our description down below, and in there you will find our affiliate links. Those same links are found on the homepage of the Epic Storm, but that's not all. We've included a Card Hoarder button on our website that will load the Epic Storm in your Card Hoarder cart to make life simple for you. Unfortunately, we're 0-3, and we need to win back-to-back -back matches to salvage even a little bit of this league. Here we have Persist on Burial Rates 5 lands, which is probably just too much. I think we have to ship it. Uh, technically, this is probably fine. I do think that you could probably get away with one less land in this deck. Like, 23 has felt like a lot. Um, are you kidding me, Tron again? <laughs> Killing me, Smalls. Oh, shit. All right. We probably need some sort of Tron heat in the board, too. Like Damping Spheres or something. I don't know. But I'd be interested in main deck to Fairies and Collector Brutalities. Get rid of the Gifts and Givens. Maybe you can't afford to play tough in the main. I'd have to really think about how the slots align. Um, but... I'd probably shave at least one land. Hers is mine. Okay. Uh, we're just going to get smushed here again. Yeah, I don't really know how um, Reanimator beats any of the land decks in the format. Like Amulet Titan or Tron. Just like, we don't have any targets that are good in either matchup. Yikes. No point in keeping that. Okay, draw. Hmm. Actually, I think I'm supposed to just main phase this. Like that. Probably. They chose not to use map. That was odd. That must have been a misclick, right? Or they just have it all. A Gigantha to their hand. <laughs> sure. 
Uh, that sees you. What are you doing over there? All is dust. So you're saying there's a chance. Okay. Just being lazy here, forgive me. They drew something. Villain's crying. Sanctum of Ugin. Blast zone, okay. And now cycle the sphere. Yep. Nick Relic. Five mana. All right, they've decided to attack instead. Okay. Just going to pass the turn here after playing the Dark Slick Shores. Okay. Stirrings. Burn Liberated. Classic. I'm in trouble. Blast Zone. Yep. Let's see what they get with the Sanctum. I'm probably going to just concede to like an Ulamog or something here. Because how we would win this game through Karn is that we go get Sarah's Emissary and name Planeswalker. But if they get Ulamog, I'm just locked out. So it doesn't matter. Kozilek? What? Why would you get that? Weird. Sure. Take my Archon. Okay. Cast the gifts. Emissary. Archon. Let's just put those both to the graveyard. Draw. Okay. Back the emissary, I suppose. Planeswalker. Pass the turn. The problem is that Kozlog's just going to annihilate me anyway. That's 10 mana. Yep. Went after my white source. What a jerk. Draw. Yeah, what an asshole. I mean, it was the right play to do. I just can't do anything now. Both my plans required the white mana off of Unburial Rites and Faithful Mending. So uh, they've got it. And we are down a game after being 0-3. Yikes. We just don't have anything for this matchup, and we faced it twice. It just doesn't matter. Hit Submit again. On the play for game two. Hmm. I don't think I'm supposed to keep that, unfortunately. This hand doesn't do anything either. I guess technically it's like a turn four reanimate. Which isn't fast enough anyway, but whatever. <sighs> okay. Godless Shrine Pass. Power Plant in a Chrome Sphere. Just play Grave. Gonna grab Archon. Sanctum of Ugin. So, not Tron on Curve, which is good. But this pause here has me a little bit nervous. Okay, not Relic. Chrome Sphere into Ancient Stirrings. You have a Maya? Okay. I feel like our opponent's on a little bit of a weird list here, but I don't know Tron list enough to have a, a definite opinion. All right, now it's Unmarked Grave for the Unburial Rites. Like, even if I 05 this league, I will have taken away the fact that I like burial rights, unburial rights in Reanimator. Not that it's like the hottest take ever, it's just that I don't know if I've seen it in other lists, but it seems really strong. 
I just think the gifts and givens would be better as collector brutalities and like one less land for like a Deferi. And then that way you could open up more cyborg space for matchups that need help. I don't know if I love the silences. I don't, I just don't know if it's because we haven't gotten paired up against enough combo decks, but if they, if combo decks are the concern, you have four main deck thought sees and then collector brutalities and then flusters. Do we really need silence? Like this feels like a wasted space. All right, let's uh, put the Archon into play. Auto yield. Another unmarked grave. And they're using Expedition Map, getting the last piece of Urzatron. Draw. Let's get in there. Nine point life swing here. Their land. Well, let's start off on consider. Just put that to the graveyard. And another land. All right, so I'm just going to do the Uncept Gifts thing. And they have Tron with nine mana. O Stone, sure. Target them with Gifts. I feel like it's been a long time since I've seen O-Stone and Tron too. This feels like a list from like 2017. Just another Archon and Embrail Rights. Draw. Get in there. Or at least attempt to. Alright, they're wisely going to use the O-Stone now. Otherwise I would get a trigger. Okay. Use the rights. Let's get back the same Archon. Ooh. That was a good draw. I think I'm just going to jam it now. So we lose to like another Ozone or Ugin, but this way you beat Karn. Okay. Are you going to concede to the trigger? What's going on here? Bringing out what you're discarding, maybe? All is dust. So whatever they kept in their hand is better than his all is dust. That's not good news. Turn the great creator. Into. Ensnaring bridge. Interesting. So I can't attack. All right, so I'm gonna unmark Wraith for a faithful mending here. And then flash that back. Actually, I feel like I should fetch first to just remove a land from the deck, trying to increase my odds of hitting. All right, let's flash this back. Ooh. That's an answer to bridge. But I've played my land, so let's just thought see. Get out of here. You can't have that either. Pass the turn. Turns at it again. Kind of surprised. Like, we're also not running any graveyard hate. Like, our board has a lot of similar effects in it, in my opinion. Between, like, Prismatic Ending and Fatal Push and Brutality and Fluster and Silence. Like, all those cards are similar to effects we have in the main deck. But we don't have anything like a Leyline of the Void. I know that we didn't play the Mirror yet this uh, league. But I'm sort of wondering... What are some other effects that we could possibly want? And something like Leyline of the Void strikes me as a card that this deck could theoretically want for a wide-open metagame. Okay, so we're going to remove the bridge and win the game. We stole game number two from Tron, but now we still have to get one at game number three. Woot woot. Resubmit. Um, I don't think this hand is good enough. So like turn one thought sees is great. You could even target yourself, hoping to rip a land for turn to persist, but like this isn't disruptive enough, I think, the Sphinx. So I'm going to ship it. 
Uh, guess so. I don't know if I love this hand. Turn one, Tron piece into map. Yikes. Play strand and pass. Oh, so we're just screwed. Yeah, where's Damping's here when you need one? Consider that I can go to the graveyard. Archon. I don't know what I'm doing anymore. Getting smashed, I think, is the answer. Let's just put a number of rights in our graveyard, maybe? Or mending? Mending might be the play here. Let's try doing mending. Why not? Okay. I'm going to concede to that. Uh, we are 0-4. One match left to go. <laughs> If you're looking for more great Magic the Gathering content, definitely check out the Eternal Glory podcast. It is myself, Brian Cook, alongside Brian Koval and Phil Gallagher. We primarily discuss Legacy. That said, a lot of what we talk about transcends all formats. We're available on all major podcast platforms. The fifth and final match, we are 0-4, and, and this is probably one of the better opening hands we've had this league, if I'm being completely honest. All right, watery grave. Let's cast this thought sees. What are we looking at here? I think we take the clothis, leave them with goif. We can ending the goif later. Fatal push doesn't really matter against us, so that's just a dead card. Abrupt decay, sort of a dead card too. So I guess. Based on what we've seen so far, that this is Boomer Jund. And down comes the Tarmogoyf. Sure. Draw. Okay, so now we have a way of getting creatures to our graveyard eventually. Go get that basic planes. And cast this prismatic ending. Boom. Get out of here. Pass the turn. Meyer. That we didn't know about. Mending. Yikes. Just play a tap the shrine and pass the turn. Okay. So they still have... We know everything but one card at the moment. I'm sorry, they played the Goyf. So we don't know two cards. And pass the turn. Okay. Let's target them with Gifts and Given. This might be one of those times that I do four because we have the Mending in the Graveyard. I have Persistent Hand. So I think we should just go for value. Uh, get the Imperial Rights. So let's get the Sphinx. We can get Archon. Maybe even mending. Like, this seems good to me. Okay, two creatures to hand. I'm not surprised by that. Okay. Go get the island. And then flashback mending. Discard two creatures. I am so surprised that happened. How could that possibly happen? And now let's bring back the Archon. Woot woot. And we got a game win. Oh yeah. Let's see if we can actually put together two game wins in one round for Andre. I'd love it if that happened. Um, I think we could probably shave on gifts here. Still kind of like these. I don't know. Bring in the brutalities. I'll leave in one gifts. Or actually, oh, it's not going to let me. I was going to say I could shave a land. But this seems fine. Do it. 
I guess our deck doesn't really have any answers to Leyline of the Void. I mean, we have two copies of Teferi in the board. But your answer to Leyline's like, build up to eight mana and start hard casting Archons. God damn it, why did I say it out loud? Ugh. Uh, that's not good. Okay. So we're on the hard cast play in this game. Okay. You got it. Go get Watery Grave and Fatal Push. Get out of here, Goyf. Pass the turn. On their end step, we'll Faithful Mending. I probably could have played the Marsh Flats to get a basic planes instead of bolting myself again, but where would the fun in that be? Three mana. Fulminator Mage. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Oh, that hurts. This really is Boomer Jund. It's like we're facing like the 2015 metagame of modern tonight. Okay. Faithful Mending. Discard these unmarked graves that are absolutely useless. Draw. All right. I'm going to do myself a favor. I'm going to I'm going to pick this one up. Uh, we're just going to have to go to game three and sideboard in those Teferis. Okay. And maybe we go a little bit less hard on the graveyard stuff and I bring these thought seizes back in. Let's get rid of this uh gifts and given. Honestly, I think I might just cut the unmarked graves. I know it seems crazy, but I just don't want to be that like we have faithful mendings and collector brutalities to get stuff to the graveyard. I'd rather just be like a bad reanimator deck that doesn't lose the layout line outright so let's try this all right on the play sure this seems fine opponent mulligans to six to five to four they kept four and put a ley line in okay so I'm going to start on Thoughtseize, see what they're working with here. They have two lands in hand. We do have two Teferis in our deck to answer this ley line. Okay, draw. Bitter. I'm going to bin it. Okay. And they're passing the turn. Draw. I wonder, I wonder what the best cards to answer Leyline for this deck would be. There's Fracture and then another card that both had like really powerful effects and like very similar sets. Maybe one of those would be good. Uh, I can't think of the name of them off the top of my head because I'm old, but. Those cards might be playable in the Esper uh, colors. Draw. All right, we're halfway to hard casting this Archon. So I could cast this Faithful Mending, but I'm sort of not inclined to when my opponent's so far behind because I don't really want to discard anything in my hand. And making land drops is fine. We're not like, our hand isn't super clunky. Everything seems fine here. Okay, still two cards in hand, four mana. What are you doing? Oh. Well, shit. Okay. Let's just kill that. Okay. Draw. Mana number five. If I lose to a mulligan to four, not going to be super thrilled. I mean, right now, they're probably winning. <laughs> we just traded three for one with this Torok. Getting Torok again, another ley line. All right, so we're definitely on the hard cast to win plan. So I think that means I'm fine to cast this mending here because I'm just going to discard these. 
Double land is honestly just better than those at this point. Draw. Pass the turn. Old Robert. Sure. Old Bobby. Draw. I can cast that. But I think I should... Oh. What do I name here? I think it's sorcery? I, I honestly am not sure. Ab so push and... Abrupt Decay don't hit it. If they could have like Assassin's Trophy or Terminate, so maybe it's instant. I was thinking Sorcery for like Maelstrom Pulse, but they probably don't play that. But then again, this is like a Boomer Jund list, so you never know. Inquisition. Now they hit my Collector Brutality. Damn. But Sarah's Emissary might get the job done here. Draw. And another Brutality. Get in there. Okay, let's kill something. Target creature gets minus two, minus two. Get out of here, Bobby. You've been collected, and you've been brutalized. Bryant underscore Cook wins the match. Andre, we did not go zero and five. It did not happen. I'm glad I could do that for you. Uh, not the world's best result here, but I'll take uh, not zero five. Like I mentioned, I'd really like to see Collector Brutalities in the main. I'd also like to see Main Deck to Fairy. Gifts and Given, I don't think was the card. 23 lands felt like a lot. And uh, I was really, I know, I'm just reiterating what I've said throughout the league. And I really liked Unburial Rights. I thought that card was terrific. Um, and then I'd look at exploring other stuff for the sideboard. Like having four ending in the main and then four push in the board, it feels like a lot for very similar matchups like it's good against probably hammer time so if you want to keep that plan it's exclusively for hammer time almost um because like you have creature control between prismatic ending and brutality so why do you need fatal push too but i don't know maybe i'm wrong here other people that are smarter than me that play more modern can probably give you better feedback but thank you for watching audrey thank you for this donation deck <sighs> been a rough night i'm gonna go rest up take care hey brand cook here i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please like and subscribe but also follow the social media channels down below if you want to support this content directly i would recommend going to the shop and if you need a little bit of assistance with the epic storm to get to that next level i would recommend going to the tutoring don't worry, there's more great content coming right up.